So here we are talking about just some extra things for the facilitation class that I want to be sure that you get. Um, on Canvas, you'll find a five minute personality test, lion, beaver, otter, golden retriever. Um, and so this is a, 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 a really good instrument to kind of look at um, when you're working with your clients and for you to think yourself, um, how does my client learn? Um, and so um, let me talk about that and unpack it just a little more. So um, this is um, based on the idea of uh, people learn either concretely or abstractly, either randomly or sequentially. So they take in information in either a concrete or abstract way, and um, they do things uh, in either a random or a sequential way. And so when we think about um, this idea, uh, concrete means that um, you're very practical. You want um, an application, right? Um, abstract means you're all about the theory. And so it's either going to be concrete or abstract. Um, then you're either going to be random or sequential. So uh, if you're a sequential person, these are the people when they do math, they follow all the steps. Um, a random person uh, might do math uh, and go step one, step three, step two, step five, and still come to the answer, even skipping some steps. And so when we put them together, we see kind of learning styles or personality types. Concrete, random, or lion uh, in our Cynthia Tobias illustration, abstract random or otter, abstract sequential or beaver, and concrete sequential or retriever. And so the animal names um, are just a way to help clients remember it. It's easier to remember I'm a, a lion than I'm concrete random. So let's kind of unpack that for just a minute. So when you think about the lion or the concrete random personality, this person likes to lead. Um, they like to be in charge. They don't have to be in charge, but they want someone to be in charge. Um, they're good decision makers. They're very goal oriented. They're love me, love my mission kind of folks. Um, they like things in a Twitter format, short to the point. Um, whereas someone who is um, a retriever likes all the details, right? They want to read the whole blog. Um, and so what we have often is we have a lion who's married to a retriever, still both concrete, very practical, but the retriever wants all the details. The lion wants you to get to the point. And so um, if the um, lion comes home and says to the retriever, how was your day? And the retriever starts saying, well, my day started out and I went to the store and I was trying to find toilet paper, but there wasn't any. So then I went to another store and there wasn't any. And then I decided, never mind the toilet paper, I'll look for hand sanitizer. I went to three more places and then I had breakfast and I cooked this X, Y, Z. And so by this point, the lion has completely tuned out. If we reverse it and the retriever asks the lion, well, how was your day? They'll say it was fine. Now we frustrated these guys because they want all the details. They'll say, you never tell me anything right? Um, so when we think about otters, otters are abstract. They like um, ideas and they're random. These are the folks who just want to have fun. They're very social. They're always thinking about um, how it affects the people. They enjoy influencing and motivating people. An otter can talk anyone into doing anything. Um, they like to hurry up and finish things, uh, but they're not so uh, focused on all the details um, and so they often sometimes talk too much um, they might be, be a little too permissive as parents uh, so that's an otter the great thing about the otter is that they're great networkers they're going to always know someone who knows someone who knows someone if you need something done so a beaver uh, these are your your um, people who read all of the details, right? So you kind of think about an accountant or an engineer, they like details, they read the instruction books. Whereas um, a lion, they don't even know where the instruction books are, right? Um, a beaver knows that there's a right way to do it and you need to do it the right way. Um, they also are very organized, they like to solve problems, um, they want to take their time and do it right. Whereas lions want to do it now, and otters want to have fun while they're doing it. Um, retrievers are the loyal 
um, folks in this whole learning style, right? Um, they're very good at making friends. If they're your friend, they're your friend forever. Um, they don't like change and they react to change. Um, they like security. Um, they can be sensitive, but they're very caring and their relationships are very deep. Um, they want to be loved by everyone. They need to be appreciated. Um, and they, worked be they work best in a situation where there is a predictable pattern of work. Um, they're very accommodating, but they can be indecisive and sometimes difficult for them to express emotion. And so they are concrete and they're sequential. So that's a little summary of those learning styles. As you think about your clients in the future or yourselves, it's always helpful to identify that because it gives us a language with which to talk to our clients. We also want to talk about the idea of self-disclosure. Self-disclosure is what you share of yourself with the client. And we want to limit ourselves as clinicians with what we share because it's not about us, it's about our client. So we can self-disclose, but we want to first ask ourselves, will it be helpful to my client? If it won't be helpful to my client, then we're not going to self-disclose. Uh, then we also want to think about, uh, can I say it in three sentences? And so if I can't say it in three sentences, I don't want to self-disclose. Because again, it's about the client. It's not about me telling my story. So for example, if you've ever visited someone in a hospital um, or had someone visit you, right? That sometimes when people visit you, they sit down on the edge of your bed and they say, so how are you doing? Um, and you say, fine. And then they begin to say, well, you know, I had a surgery like that a long time ago. And they tell you all the details about their story and I almost died and now, right, you feel better, huh? And so we wanna be sure that we don't become that person for our clients. And so we might say something as far as self-disclosing like, um, I had an experience like that. It really helped me to learn more about my diagnosis through reading. I wonder if something like that would be helpful to you. Right? So three sentences. Um, you know, several years ago, my parent died and I really struggled um, with asking myself, did I do enough? I wonder if something, that's something that you have struggled with. Right? Always giving the client permission to say yes or no or that doesn't apply to me. Um, so those are a few things for us to keep in mind. Um, remember from theories also, you learned the miracle question. If you woke up tomorrow and your life were going to be just like you wanted it to be, what would you be doing? Or if you woke up tomorrow and um, this situation was exactly like you wanted it to be, what would it look like? So that's always a good question you can use in your counseling session. Hope this helps and I'll look forward to seeing you virtually.